Tyrannosaurus Rex is known as the king of the dinosaurs. Not only does the name literally mean Tyrant Lizard King, but the title fits because of the plethora of superpowered attributes that are unique to only Rex. And perhaps one of the most important attributes are those mighty jaws. But just how strong were they? How strong was T-Rex's bite? The following video takes an in-depth look into the anatomy and morphology of Tyrannosaurus rex based on the currently available literature such as scientific articles, experiments, and paleontology books in order to portray an informative picture to one of the most studied prehistoric creatures of all time. There are about 300 bones in one complete skeleton of Tyrannosaurus rex, but for this analysis let's hone in on looking at the size of T-Rex's skull itself. The skull being comprised of what is known as a cranium and the mandible, more commonly known as the jaws. Looking at it from the front, what you can immediately realize is that the skull is much more wide and robust than other theropods from the same period. Take a look at Carcharodontosaurus, a massive theropod from the Cretaceous. The differences in their skulls highlight what the skulls were engineered to do. Carcharodontosaurus was a very large theropod, but why was its skull so narrow? It's theorized that it took down gigantic prey and is said to have hunted on massive sauropods of its era, there's no way Carcharodontosaurus could take down a sauropod in a single forceful bite, and it would instead rely on slicing enough meat off the body to eventually take the sauropod, or any of its other prey, down. It didn't need a massive skull to do that. By comparison, T-Rex had evolved to deal with smaller, faster, and heavily armored prey, dinosaurs such as Edmontosaurus, Ankylosaurus, and Triceratops. And because of that, its jaw evolved into a completely different powerhouse. In order to reconstruct the muscles in T-Rex's skull, you need to compare it to the closest living thing, or in other words, create what is known as a modern analog. That modern analog would be the crocodile as it has the strongest bite force of any terrestrial animal alive today. These modern reconstructions are all based on the paleontologist's best conjecture and hypothesis, and sometimes they do differ in opinions. For example, according to an in-depth article by Hans C. E. Larson, he believes that there is a case to be made that Tyrannosaurus Wex was capable of cranial kinesis. Cranial kinesis allows a jaw to extend from the neurocranium, or in other words, for the jaw to open way past where it should just like a snake. According to Dr. Larson, since the palatal bones of T-Rex do not appear to be rigidly connected to any other bone in the skull, the relative isolation suggests that some kinesis may have been possible. Even if full cranial kinesis wasn't present, the distinguished artist and paleontologist Gregory S. Paul notes in his seminal book Predatory Dinosaurs of the World that theropods, including T-Rex, had a bone called the splenial in the front half of the jaw. This formed a loosely articulated hinge joint with the central groove of the splenial. This double jointed jaw would thus have been able to bow outward even further, allowing predators to open their jaw extra wide. So why would it have been useful for T-Rex to have this ability? Because T-Rex's way of defeating and ingesting prey was different to other theropods. Instead of slicing meat off its prey and waiting for it to bleed out like Giganotosaurus or Carcharodontosaurus, it would take one quick and powerful bite, biting even through bone, and then ingest it in one fell swoop. This method is known as a puncture-pull method of feeding, and is the most commonly hypothesized way in which paleontologists believe T-Rex hunted. Paleontologist David Hone writes in his excellent book, The Tyrannosaur Chronicles, that T-Rex's skull as a whole was robust. At the most extreme, animals like Tyrannosaurus had among the largest and strongest skulls of any terrestrial animal. The fused nasals that characterize Tyrannosaurus are symptomatic of this overall construction, strengthening the skull and allowing for a powerful bite. However, David Hone doesn't believe T-Rex could open his jaw like a snake, and although he thinks the two sides of the mandible could move apart a little to increase the size of the gape, he thinks these bones would have been held together very firmly by ligaments, and would not be able to move around separately and change the shape of the jaw. In an excellent article, Gregory S. Paul compares several Tyrannosaurids and notes that T-Rex had the very best temporal jaw abductors and anterior cervical muscles. In other words, this particular skull was designed to crush bones and the skull itself was adopted for high stress loads. This is further supported by the fact that in comparison to other theropods, T-Rex had fewer teeth. But these teeth were very special. They were conical instead of blade-like in shape and very large, with the largest measuring in at nearly 20 centimeters or 7 inches. They were also serrated, just like your typical steak knife. And not only that, back in 92, Dr. Abler suggested that those serrations harbored decaying bacteria breeding flesh. Or in other words, this would have given T-Rex what is known as a septic bite. 
where if the initial bite didn't somehow bring down the other dinosaur, the infection eventually would. Gregory S. Paul is not a big advocate of the septic bite, since waiting for a prey to weaken would increase the risk of another T-Rex taking over said prey. But he did note in predatory dinosaurs that T-Rex had a large and stoutly constructed skull and jaw, a reduced preorbital opening, deepened maxillas and a short premaxilla, all of which added strength to its snout. The teeth would increase in size toward the mid jaw so more teeth could cut into the flesh. The lower jaw of the Tyrannosaurus were also exceptionally strong. Even the sides of the back half of the lower jaw bulge outward to help accommodate more jaw muscles. He also had a heavily built roof of the mouth. All this gave him, as Gregory S. Paul put it, an unusually strong bite. So T-Rex not only had to be on the lookout for its potential prey, but for other potential predators, or more specifically, other T-Rexes stealing said prey. And T-Rex's binocular vision would have very much come in handy in this situation. Taking a look at T-Rex from above, you can see that the skull has a very pronounced T-shaped profile, where the orbits of the eyes are set in a way where they point forwards, giving the animal binocular vision, allowing them to be excellent at judging distances. This is something primarily found in carnivores. Herbivores have laterally positioned eyes, allowing them to look outwards and scan for any potential predators. With all of that in mind, let's get to the numbers to find out just how strong T-Rex's bite was. Dr. E. Rayfield conducted an in-depth cranial mechanics experiment where she tested whether the skull was optimized for the resistance of large bidirectional feeding loads. And the results demonstrated that the cranium was equally adapted to resist biting or tearing forces and the puncture-pull feeding hypothesis was well supported. She determined that alligators have a bite force that ranges from about 3,000 to 5,000 newtons. According to Rayfield's study, T-Rex had a bite force that ranged from 29,510 newtons in the anterior teeth to 53,725 newtons in the posterior teeth. What's more, she also found that a T-Rex bite force would increase tremendously from when it was a juvenile, as a juvenile would max out at around only 3,850 newtons on the posterior teeth. So all in all, Rainfield's study placed T-Rex with a bite force of about 12,000 pounds of force. Emily Rayfield also modeled bone stress and found out that the elastic tissue between plates of bone in T-Rex's four and a half foot long skull acted as a shock absorber, allowing the creature to bite down on prey with an intensity that would crack the skull of most animals, as she put it. In other studies, such as one done by Dr. Carl Bates, an even wider range of muscles that weren't included in other studies were tested. T-Rex's bite force was then found to be more likely between 35,000 and 57,000 newtons, or 12,814 pounds of force. Dr. Bill Sellers, who studies extinct animals, even stated regarding that experiment that everyone expected T-Rex to have a strong bite force, but that the results were even stronger than they expected. That bite force is the equivalent to an elephant sitting on the ground, or eight times the biting power of a lion, or five times that of a hyena. So just how strong was a Tyrannosaurus rex's bite? Measuring in at anywhere from 12 to nearly 13,000 pounds of force, it was strong enough to crack through solid bone and receive no damage to its structure whatsoever. It was strong enough to kill in one bite. T-Rex may have even had additional abilities, such as having a septic bite or being capable of cranial kinesis. So in conclusion, T-Rex's bite was a very strong bite indeed. What else would you like to learn about T-Rex? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to share the video so the channel can grow. I'd like to thank each one of my Patreon members as their contribution helped in the making of this video. If you'd like to contribute and appear in the credits in the future, my Patreon page is Godzilla Rex and it's in the description below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.